You're listening to Sports Radio Detroit. Welcome to Grave Discussions. I am your host, Barnabas. And I am your co-host, Samael. And welcome to the Witching Hour. <laughs> <laughs> so the actual the title of the episode is Toil and Trouble. Yes. Episode number 36. And if you couldn't tell, we're going to be discussing a timeless movie monster, the witch, in this episode. Because, you know, after... So the success of Suspiria and with uh, the chilling adventure of Sabrina and everything. They're kind of making a comeback. So we thought, you know, it was uh, about time to talk about witch horror movies. It is, because I don't think we've covered, like, we, didn't, we haven't had a witch episode. I mean, we talked about Hocus Pocus last month, mm-hmm. but that wasn't really a witch episode. That was just a Halloween episode. So now we are all about the witches. Yep. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to do it because... Like I said, I think we've been seeing more of those kind of movies recently, so it'd be interesting to kind of theorize like why that is and just talk about ones that we enjoy. So before we get into all of that, we wanted to give a shout out as always to Sports Radio Detroit, um, our gracious host, the one and only, and why don't you tell them where uh, the people can find more SRD. You can find Sports Radio Detroit on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. That's Sports Radio Detroit, SRD. They're the one and only. Yes, sir. So let's jump right into our news. There's been a lot of developments uh, over the past few days, over about the past week. Uh, The first thing is probably the biggest thing and uh, one of the more interesting. So... I just mentioned the chilling adventures of Sabrina. Yeah, I heard about the fucking that that thing, the lawsuit. Yep. So the Satanic Temple has filed a fifty million dollar lawsuit against Netflix and the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina because of their portrayal of, of Baphomet of the Baphomet statue. Yeah. So <laughs> fifty million dollars, though. Can you believe that? Like that's insane. Satanic Temple is full of losers. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I read up on, like, their teachings and stuff like that, you know. I don't really know what kind of people, like, really, I don't know, like, take part of that. But, I mean, that's that's a really, like, steep amount to be asking. Yeah, bro. Like, oh, you used our figure. Like, you don't own Satan. Satan should be suing you fuckers because you just made up some bullshit religion. Hey, so, we're we're atheists, but you know philosophical principles. Eat a dick. Yeah. So, it, to kind of clarify what's going on, the Satanic Temple is suing Netflix and the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina uh, over the statue because they believe it's misappropriating their you know religious icon, and, and most importantly because they had the statue commissioned for them and. I'm not going to lie, the the two do look extremely similar to one another. Yeah. I mean, it's... So... But the, that that goat with the titties and, like, the <laughs> fucking the, the goat legs, like, that's been around forever. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, but this one doesn't have, like, female breasts. Oh. Yeah, the, the Satanic Temple one does not, and neither does the one in uh chilling adventures of sabrina so t- technically like it's kind of their interpretation they commissioned the statue so that's why they believe they're in their right to sue i mean but i don't know man like the, the amount gets to me like what do you need 50 million dollars for like if i was offended hey it's it's because you looked at my dog wrong am i gonna have to charge you 20 dollars? hey apocalypse is coming bro they need the money if they're gonna start that new world order <laughs> yeah i i guess <laughs> I don't know. It's it's just uh, that's the thing that most people have like. Thanks, Donald with. Trump. <laughs> right, that's the thing that kind of is uh, you know, just weird like to me personally. But that's happening. Uh, any kind of like consequences with the show 
are really up in the air. There's been like mentions of them potentially having to remove the show from Netflix or some garbage like that. That's I hope, so fucking stupid. Yeah, I hope that's Fuck not the you, case. Fuck you, Satanic <laughs> Temple, you fake fucking devil worshippers. Yeah. I mean, because... Bunch that, of that's fucking the, bunch that, of fucking losers. Everyone's looking for an easy payout. Everyone just wants to get paid. Oh, I'm suing him. Look, he kind of has the same go bro they're mm-hmm. both they're talking about satan satan's a fucking depicted as like a fucking goat so they're gonna have yeah. a goat fucking well, statue so, so the thing most importantly is that the show kind of well they believe that the show is painting these witches who worship satan portrayed you know by this idol the statue as evil and stuff and the satanic temple is not about that you know they don't want baphomet their their depiction of baphomet you know connected with with evil and murder and all this stuff and cannibalism in in sabrina that's that's not even a real religion you know what i'm saying the witch's religion believing in the dark lord that's not that's in not in any sect of satanism neither the neither the atheists nor the luciferians trust me i'm well i'm I'm well knowledgeable in the satanic Mm. stuff but i'm (laughs) saying like they're suing for no fucking it's like it's like bro it's like if i uh if I like uh, took uh, took Jesus on the cross, mm-hmm. right, and I made a TV show, and like the guy who invented the first image of Jesus on the cross, like ten thousand generations later, like one of his like fucking followers is like, I don't like that you made Jesus on the cross in your TV show, and yeah. you said and you made up a new religion about Jesus. That's not how Jesus. Well, it's like, bro, fuck you, religious yeah. freedoms. These people can make a fictional religion if they want, and have a fucking. Have just a pair of titties and be like, yeah, that's Satan. They could do whatever they want, bro. Fuck, yeah. fuck the Satanic Temple. Fuck all these organized Satanic groups. That's not what it's about. What happened to free will? That's what Satan was about. Mm-hmm. About free will, not about fucking. Hey, let's let's make a fucking after, like after school group. Let's fucking have fucking a reading circle and shit. Let's fucking let's all be fucking atheists and just fucking chill and just be like yeah we're satanists because satan was an atheist no nah, bro read the fucking old shit satan was doing his job <laughs> so samuel is obviously very passionate about this uh we'll see what what comes of it obviously if i mean in the show it's it's witches worshiping this thing right if the satanic temple people are not witches then personally i don't really see the comparison I mean, even, that's just my thing. even if they are witches Sabrina is fictional. It's like, hey, yeah. what if witches had powers and they did all this stuff? You know, it's a big what if. No witches are killing their sisters and then resurrecting them in their fucking mm. backyards. And, I hope not. And then going to like some fucking Harry Potter-esque school to mm. fucking learn witchcraft. That's yeah. not That's not real. It's fiction. That's why, oh, this is nothing like Satanism. Yeah, it's nothing like real fucking life either, you fucking <laughs> geniuses. Yeah. So let's move on. <laughs> Damn it, bro. We'll, we'll see what happens with that. The curse of Samael is upon the church of Satan. You guys pretend to be to, about about Satan, but you're not. So put a fucking sock in it. We'll see what happens with that. Be on the lookout. They're going to lose the lawsuit. That's what's going to happen. I'm cursing them. We'll see. Next up, Child's Play remake. Uh, officially slated now for summer 2019 the actual release date june 21st 2019 oh yeah yep i don't care what anyone says chucky may look like a fucking asshole in this new <laughs> one but the I, I i'm i'm excited because curse of chucky i liked it yeah it wasn't like oh my god this movie is genius but it was fun to watch all chucky movies are good so well but but this is going to be something completely different well not completely different but pretty much entirely different it's okay yeah Suspiria, so, I mean, we'll Suspiria was different and yeah that wasn't too bad yeah i mean as long as they kind of i think if they don't go too comedic with it then it'll be good because the first movie had comedy you know from chucky but it was more of like there's a killer doll in the house trying to kill this kid you know he was just and, he was just witty you know what i'm saying yeah. he was just he was kind of a don't fuck with the chuck like that type yeah. of shit like, he was like darkly charming kind of yeah you know and like yeah clever it was a horror with comedy elements but it wasn't a comedy horror Mm -hmm. that's the and i hope this one like sticks to like the the creepy horror like sure chuck i want chucky to like talk here and there but i want him to be like just as devious i don't Mm -hmm. i i just hope they they go in the right direction with this because this is this is hit or miss like yeah there's either like either i think you're gonna completely like this movie or think it's shit it's gonna be one of those like yeah just like halloween if you didn't like it you hated it Yep. Yeah, I pretty much agree. I mean, I'm 
reserving all my judgment uh but they are making a lot of changes but yeah next summer there's a new poster out too portraying the the packaging it's not good guys anymore it's the buddy doll now so well you gotta you gotta change something up can't be the exact same as the original yep so i mean yeah like i said i'm holding out judgment but i am excited so be on the lookout for that june 21st 2019 next up uh also you know kind of an old thing stranger things the the 80s set netflix smash hit has officially wrapped on the third season of the show oh shit and that's coming next summer as well damn i've been waiting a minute mm-hmm. i finished stranger things i think it was like six like five or six months ago i completely finished like every episode and like it was super super good like i've been wondering when the hell they're gonna release it yeah and now we finally get an answer we gotta wait till the summertime yep but summer 2019 is gonna be awesome for horror so i am super pumped for that um just in time only a few months left till halloween so it's gonna be perfect so uh yeah be on the lookout for stranger things now the whole like you know marketing advertising rush is gonna come down the pipeline you're gonna be seeing lots more stranger things stuff i promise you so i'm excited though i think it's an awesome show let's go over just a couple new trailer announcements and then we'll get into our first segment for this episode the first trailer uh was the thing that i was looking forward to the most and actually looks really awesome we mentioned this uh film before but leprechaun returns the newest installment in the leprechaun horror franchise is coming back december 11th on vod except no warwick davis yep yeah no war no warwick davis but we have uh his uh, his last name is porco can i can i can i call something sure when this movie comes out and we go see it Mm -hmm. i'll bet you ten dollars the thing we're not gonna like about the leprechaun is his voice well you haven't watched the trailer but it's it's pretty clear what his voice is like in the trailer yeah i haven't all right then I, I i was yeah you gotta watch the trailer i was like I'm still on the fence about it. I got to watch the trailer again like a few times, I think. I think it could grow on me. It's definitely different than Warwick Davis's, but yeah. Lyndon Porco as the new Leprechaun. The the trailer honestly did look awesome though. Like it looked like just flat out like fun horror, it, you know. I hope it's as good as the original. I think it might honestly be. It's a direct sequel to the original except this time it's with a bunch of like sorority girls. So Oh shit. Yeah. Uh, but it looks cool. The effects look pretty good. I actually like the look and feel of Lyndon Porco as the leprechaun like a lot from this trailer. So we'll see if it can deliver. But yeah, you got to watch it. And if you guys have not seen it yet, it just dropped today. Go check it out and then be on the lookout December 11th. Next up, uh, there's two Netflix movies that just dropped trailers pretty recently within the last few days. Oh, shit. Uh, actually the first is a series called kingdom and i don't think we mentioned it before but it has been in the news sort of this is a korean uh produced series for netflix and it is a zombie horror but the cool thing is that this is set in like like 14th 15th century korea (laughs) oh shit so you're gonna be seeing a whole bunch of like people dressed up you know in those old asian outfits and stuff just fighting against zombies i just hope we don't see dudes like fucking spin kicking zombies and shit that would be ridiculous (laughs) i don't think it's gonna be so like martial artsy like that i think it's more gonna be like you know maybe they have weapons like swords and stuff like that that would be dope i want to see like a fucking old like see that's what's missing from zombie movies because nowadays like they're all like modern day or like during like the Mm. end of times or whatever the fuck yeah and then it's just like fucking repetitive like it's like oh now the zombies aren't our problem now the humans that are also living are our problem that happens in everything and i don't think i don't think this one's going to be like that because it looks more like it's zombies versus people like people are trying to keep them out setting up defenses you know stuff like that so i I think this one's going to be different. Plus, it's like set in the past in Korea, so I'm I'm pretty pumped for it. I've never I don't there has there been a zombie movie that takes place like way back in the day. I'm sure there was one. 
not zombie, but you know, I guess Army mm-hmm. of Darkness when you think about it. Well, yeah, kind of. If you want to like throw that, yeah, <laughs> in with like zombies or like I kind of, I kind of don't. Yeah, I mean, that's more yeah. like a demonic like necromancer type yeah fucking. that's like a whole nother discussion yeah, basically yeah. but um I, mean, I don't really think so i mean most of like the zombie stuff is set in modern times or like you know modern as, as far as like contemporary you know when the movie was made basically but I'd, I'd have to look it up i think there's been maybe a few but yeah anyway it's an interesting premise cool setting so be on the lookout for kingdom it's coming out january 25th 2019 on netflix the last trailer that dropped look looked pretty crazy like i said it's another netflix uh, original it's a it's a film it's dropping november 16th so actually as you're listening to this it's most likely already out on netflix it's called cam what's this one about so this one is also pretty unique because it's a horror movie surrounding this like webcam girl you know, like she basically strips on on camera online. But the cool thing is that the the premise basically revolves this around this one who wakes up one day and then like she sees that her show is live and she sees someone that looks like her on the screen, oh, but shit. she's not doing it. So then like this imposter is performing this show and doing all sorts of crazy shit for people online, like on cam, you know, stripping and but but like some really wild stuff like gore so she's got to figure out basically what's going on but it looks really cool it's like it's got lots of like cool neon colors uh it looks well shot it looks like a mind fuck kind of so yeah at the very least it looks super unique and it did actually win best screenplay and best first feature film at fantasia film festival oh shit looks like pretty soon we're gonna have our next best horror film on netflix film possibly yeah because right now apostle's kind of taking the cake for that one like, Ap- apostle is really good yeah fucking i hear so many people like talking about it now like mm-hmm. on the horror pages they're like someone suggest me something from netflix everyone's saying apostle yeah so it, it is really good i, I like that a lot this one i think it's just going to really depend on like if most people perceive it as horror uh Cause, so it depends entirely on the content because it's kind of being billed as more of like a psychological thriller sort of thing. That, that's cool like because like, even back in the day, horror, it wasn't like w- when you're watching a horror movie, it's not about like what's happening, what, 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 you know, what's on the screen. It's about mm. the shit you, you're thinking and like the stuff you think you saw, you think you heard, you know, yeah. those things. Like, it's not like, like, yeah. like in Halloween when Michael's standing at the clothesline and then he just disappears. You're like, oh fuck, he just vanished. Like. Mm-hmm. in reality he probably just walked away and lori like they didn't show him walking away or he like backed up into the bushes but you thought he disappeared so you're like right. it's it's all about what you think it's the suspense it's and if this has suspense and atmosphere i think it's going to be a good one i mean thrillers them thriller is like a subgenre of horror i guess yeah, technically unless it's like a thriller like someone kidnapped my daughter i'm gonna go get him like, like taken or something like that yeah that's, yeah, action. that's not really horror that's action but uh, this this one i think promises to kind of feature some really crazy shit so i'm excited for it uh like i said if you're watching this on the 16th or afterward then it's probably already out go check it out it's called cam so let's jump right into our very first segment um about which films oh this is the cult corner so in this week's cult corner we've got an instant classic that falls right into the witch subgenre of horror, the Blair Witch Project. And you either like this movie or you don't. Yeah. But when I watched this, when I was I was about maybe six, five, six years old, when it came out, I got it from fucking Blockbuster. My sister rented it, and this scared the fuck out of me. Yeah. Because the whole movie, like, it was like, so at first, let's break it down. Uh, there's these three filmmakers, right? there's heather josh and mike and they're going around this like local town asking for like the fucking you know what are the rumors about the blair witch they're like well if she catches you know she puts her pinky in your ass like you know the stereotypical like you know people warning you not to do it stuff and then you know as they go deeper and deeper into the woods they begin to not know what direction they're going in they're sleep they're sleeping in their tents and someone's outside the tent making noises Mm -hmm. hanging up figures 
you know, I think Josh, one of them went missing first. And then <laughs> there's that classic shot of Heather with the camera right under her nose. She's like, I'm so sorry. You yeah. know, scary movie parodied it with like the fucking, with like the <laughs> snot coming out of her yeah. nose. Just hitting the camera like, I didn't know it was going to be yeah so so let's not forget when this movie originally came out it was basically being marketed as like a real thing oh yeah like this is because this is kind of what started the found footage you know exactly basically like the mainstream found footage horror because everyone went into this thinking that they were watching like people actually you know hunting like a witch (laughs) you know and, and being in this like scenario you know with the whole like you know they were never found and uh, the, the tape went missing and it was uncovered, you know, like all that kind of shit. It basically started it, but it did wonders for the whole witch movie too, because it uh, kind of birthed like a lot of not only themes, but just kind of like typical cliches and elements that we see in witch movies now, like the witch, you know, kind of being able to control you from afar, like, uh messing with your messing with you mentally you know and this movie was was incredible i saw it when i was really young too and it had like a crazy effect on me and you never even really like see the the witch that's kind of like the crazy part you know it's back, all back in the day the shit you couldn't see would scare the fuck out of you yeah exactly like you imagine you're just walking in a dark house right abandoned house you mm-hmm. can't see shit something just grabs you and tosses you and you get up and you run out you're not going to be like, well, I didn't see it, so I wasn't scared. <laughs> like, no. Yeah. This, this is not how it works. Yeah. But nowadays, people need, like, a monster with, like, eight-foot-long fingers and pointy nails, skinny mm-hmm. as fuck, eight feet tall, <laughs> just fucking crawling toward you to scare them. Yeah. No, yeah, I know. Yeah, the Blair Witch Project really just played on you, like, emotionally, you know, and mentally. Uh, mostly with with audio and the the fast camera movements you know all that kind of stuff i mean there's a lot you could say about it as like a found footage film too but the the witch thing was really driven through in like the sense of it being folklore like an urban legend kind of which is in my opinion like a really interesting you know kind of take on it like it's just this like presence in the woods basically like i thought that was pretty cool that was like the best part about it if they just went into the woods and they just got attacked by an unseen witch it would be fucking stupid but it starts off you know they're asking the local town folk they're they hear all these you know rumors like you know i heard the derpa derpa witch a witch a witch so that kind of that kind of made you be like all right so either they're gonna see the witch or they're not and since this is a horror movie they're definitely gonna get either killed or Mm-hmm. I, w- I would signify this as like one of the first no hope movies <laughs> yeah <laughs> besides like cannibal holocaust <laughs> yeah yeah because i mean really you don't know kind of what happens at the end of this film which opens it up obviously to part two but also <laughs> uh, we haven't talked about it a lot we wrote it down in the notebook before we started this podcast and we were talking about a lot of stuff mm-hmm. uh this would fall under the category of uh dumb white people shit <laughs> slash hey let's go adventure in this yeah. dangerous area yeah it's like, oh, those. yeah, don't don't go out in the woods. You know, there's a witch out there. All right, buddy. For white people are crazy. You could be like, did you hear about that half bear, half lion in the woods? Yeah. <laughs> no, but we want to go check it out. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. You'll die. We won't die. Yeah, don't worry. We won't tell anybody that we're going there either. Right. And none of our cell phones will work. <laughs> just our cameras. That's, that, that's it. Right. We're just going to record it. <laughs> also, um, make sure... Uh, that uh, if we uh, if we get lost, that we panic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that happens in every fucking movie. Let's, let's just get into the worst a mental and emotional state possible. We'll ride this out, no biggie. I know my <laughs> friends went missing in the woods where people are always disappearing, right? F- because of an alleged witch. But I'm gonna go look for them too in this abandoned house. Yeah, yeah. There were a lot of questionable, you know, because I think that they were especially trying to make it seem like, yeah, this is real because like that's some some dumb shit that you know people would actually do but uh i did want to say the the influence and like the way that they portrayed the witch is very obvious especially when you look at like the film that we're going to talk about later in the chopping block you know i think that honestly in some ways the two are kind of similar in the way that they like portray the witches you know as kind of like this almost urban legend kind of thing like folklore you know 
Uh, but the Blair Witch Project is super divisive. You know, I feel like uh, people who watched it when they were like kids mostly like it a lot because it terrified them because they didn't know what to expect. But older people probably really didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. For us, it was different because like you always want to go with your buddies, mm -hmm. grab some cameras, go into the woods, explore local urban legends. Like I said, dumb white people shit. That's what we do. <laughs> right. We like to do stuff like that, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. One day we should definitely pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> If we ever decide to, if, if we ever hear about a Yeti, not the Penny <laughs> Yeti, cause that's our homie. Right. If we ever hear about like a Yeti or like a monster or like a demon in the woods, mm -hmm. can we agree that we shouldn't go? I can, uh, yeah, I can get like, down we, with that. We can't just be like professionals and like fucking analyzing horror. And then uh, as soon as the situation comes up where we can make the exact same mistakes as everyone else made we don't do them that would be great but if we if we fall into this trap <laughs> of of just living up to the these curiosity stereotypes we're gonna fucking well die. hey but hey what if we take uh, a male and a female friend along with us who have like a budding you know sexual tension and then we conveniently don't tell anybody where we're going <laughs> and we take as little like you know rations and stuff to survive with as possible and instead of our phones, we just bring like a physical map, even yeah. though we probably don't know how to read it. <laughs> exactly. What if, what if we do that? You still, you don't want to go? That doesn't appeal to you. I mean, kind of. It appeals to me now that you mention it. <laughs> now that you mention all that. We get to, wow. we get to have promiscuous friends, no ma no GPS, and we're yeah. idiots. Yeah. That sounds like a recipe for fun, is what that sounds like. <laughs> or a very controversial but influential horror film. But yeah, I mean, ha having said all that, jokes aside, you know, this movie did kind of introduce not only a lot of influential elements, but a lot of fucking cliches to horror as well. I think that that is a, a fair thing to say. But uh, yeah, I mean, we all kind of know about the Blair Witch Project. Uh, like I said, I think that the way that they portrayed the witch is very interesting and I think that that's a pretty good segue into like our overall dis discussion. There have been lots of, you know, uh, interpretations of the the witch character over the years. Uh, witches have been in horror films a lot. I mean, you know, kind of sparingly, but even all the way back to like 1922 was the earliest I could find. Yeah, there was a witch horror movie yeah, called Haxan. Oh shit! And it's actually on uh, YouTube, like the full movie. If but it's you wanna... probably—is it like witch, like pointy hat, big nose, wart on the nose, witch? No, I don't think so. I think it's supposed to be like a kind of like a realistic look at at actual witches or oh, something shit. like that. Yeah. Well, then make sure you guys check that one out. What was it called? Haxan. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, it's like the A, but it's got like the two little dots <laughs> on top of it. Uh, but yeah, it's called Hexen. It's on YouTube, the full thing. It's also part of the Criterion Collection. So yeah, you guys can find. I think it, it makes an ah sound. Hoxon. Hoxon. Because okay. when you when you like Blue Oyster Cult, the uh, O and Oyster got the two dots, and it's pronounced O. So I'm guessing Blue that Oyster. The Blue Oyster. Oyster. Yeah, something like that. So Hoxon. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so so obviously, even going all that far, you know, all that way back. But witches have been a part of, of culture for fucking and, centuries. And dude, modern days, witches are getting fucking creepier. If you, mm -hmm. you know, Blair Witch Project, Don't Knock Twice, yeah. uh, <laughs> even Lights Out, like the, the, well, not Lights Out, but you, anyway, yeah. they have like the same look, like the fucking, it's like a six foot tall chick. She weighs about 30 pounds and her fingers <laughs> yeah. are longer than my arms. Like, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I think that that's kind of like how people perceive them. Like yeah. they're just demonic right even though you know mainly they were just women yeah i mean look at the salem witch trials that was all you know i was all over fucking land you know like yeah people just wanted other people's shit so they're like i saw him flying behind right. his house he had a book of spells and he was <laughs> yeah <laughs> i can't believe how many innocent people i mean even if they were witches so the fuck what bro the fuck 
Yeah, this you, is, know, you this know how reli- you know how religion is. Yeah, bro. But like, I mean, yeah, the witch stuff, hangings, you know, even, burnings even, went back, you know, even, even to though, England even and stuff like that. Christmas so. is like fucking Yule. It's fucking pa- <laughs> right. pagan shit. Uh, Christianity itself is pagan. When you uh, here, uh, eat the body and drink the blood of God, and you'll live forever. Like right. that does not sound like some godly shit, my guy. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about that, but witches have definitely always been portrayed like in the media as, you know, these like evil spirited things and only until like kind of recently, you know, maybe like half a century ago or something where they, you know, started to be portrayed as like, like family friendly shit. Yeah. Kind of like, like, like Sabrina. Charmed. Pra- right. Practical charmed was, magic. Dude, Charmed is my favorite <laughs> favorite thing of all things yeah if you ask me the best tv show not counting you know south park non-animated bro i'm it's it's charmed for me that's fair yeah charmed was a really good show apparently there's a reboot now which is garbage but oh, I, they, haven't, I haven't seen it they said it was bad yeah i've heard really bad things about it i have not seen it but you know you know how it is i mean it's sabrina is, is kind of cool because even though it's a darker adaptation you know it doesn't look like I don't know, like a CW show, but the Charmed reboot just looks like a stupid CW show, like way too teeny, you know. Like I said, I haven't watched it, so if any of you like the show, then please tell us why you enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, the original Charmed was was great, but that was like a totally different interpretation of, of witches. Oh yeah, and I think that's like, other than like the real magic, <laughs> like that's the closest thing like to real life like witches, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like witches aren't like walking around shooting people with electricity they're just opening spell books burning sigils lighting candles saying some spells you know like yeah no biggie like you know literally it does not affect you yeah which is basically how the, like the witches and like bewitched and the original sabrina and uh you know not like hocus pocus and stuff but even like halloween town or something like that you know like that's how they were portrayed so it's it's two completely different like sides of the coin oh, dude i love bewitched yeah that was that was awesome so i mean those kind of portrayals you know painted them as like good people yeah but they just, used their powers for everything yeah <laughs> everything basically it's like know. can you get me a water from the fridge i sure can mm-hmm. and the water fucking levitates to your room hello i am water yeah. remove sentience from water bottle no fucking <laughs> notably even like a lot of the lighter portrayals though of witches um there were elements of like the witches using their powers for uh for like for love and stuff like Dude, that. Dude, I just noticed something. So mm-hmm. the the first groundbreaking found footage movie Blair Witch mm-hmm. and the second groundbreaking found footage movie move uh movie that was part of the movement of our age group Paranormal Activity mm-hmm. both have to do with witches. Oh yeah. I you just don't really find out in like the first one but later yeah. on in the series, yeah. It's still canon, you know, to it. So, like, yeah. damn, two of the two of the most important found footage movies for horror were like paranormal. Yeah, it's it's super interesting for sure. And those were both like, well, Blair Witch not so much, but you know, uh, Paranormal Activity was like the coven of witches. Oh yeah. So that's another big thing is like the coven, and that is definitely portrayed in like pretty much every witch movie you know the craft um oh the craft i forgot all about that yeah that shit was awesome the craft uh witches of eastwick the witches you know like pretty pretty much all everything and the most recent most boring one the viva itch (laughs) (laughs) yeah so another very divisive movie because lots of people hail it as like a masterpiece like the greatest horror movie ever lots of people find it to be shit and just really boring uh obviously we have to talk about the witch because it is like the most i guess talked about like the most popular yeah especially now since it's on netflix yeah i didn't like it i felt like all right here's how i explained it all right imagine getting into a car right to cedar to go to cedar point (laughs) and you're driving to cedar point and the trip is very slow yeah along the way you stop you know there's some things you see and then when you finally get to Cedar Point, you don't get to ride the dragster. You just walk around and you leave. Huh. That's what I, what I felt like after I watched this movie. Yeah. I mean, I thought that the the parts with the actual witch in it and like the ending were pretty cool. And obviously 
the the setting you know it was it was supposed to be a, a salem witch trials movie essentially just centered around like this one family but it, it was slow um yeah i not only was it slow like i felt like it didn't like deliver there was no like oomph to it there was yeah, no there was no punchline there was no like even the ending it was just like she just gets a broom and gets naked with the witches like yeah uh spoiler I, I, alert yeah i don't think it Oops. was like the most i mean most people have seen it i think at, at this point but i think people just liked it because one it's from back in the day they're talking mm-hmm. they're talking different so it must yeah. be good and then second of all it was kind of atmospheric it had like those like near the ending it gets a little mm-hmm. you know crazy when like the bull kills her dad or whatever the fuck yeah but still for me like i felt like it did not deliver at all like I, that yeah. was that's my least favorite witch movie ever released i thought it was a piece of shit technically speaking i found the movie to be like done well but yeah it was it was very dark it was very bleak i i I overall kind of like enjoyed the atmosphere of it but the atmosphere and the cinematography as with these deeper movies Mm -hmm. i I know i don't know if you noticed but like these deeper movies like suspiria Mm -hmm. woman in black like the atmosphere and the score in these movies is fantastic yeah it's just like well, at least for the witch, the the story's kind of like shaky. It's lacking. Like mm-hmm. I, I didn't really care about anyone, so like there wasn't really like good character development. The sc- yeah. script was old timey. I still understood everything they were saying. You know, I had to just keep the captions on because their accents were just too much for me. But yeah, <laughs> other than that, like I mean, there was nothing really that good about the movie. Yeah. Other than like. It's kind of atmospheric at times. There's a mystery behind it. Oh, is there really witches, you know? And then, yeah. then you know, the fucking... What's his name? Black Dave? Uh, It's, yeah, Black Tom, I want to say, maybe, or... I don't know, something. The goat. Yeah. The goat talks to her. Yeah. Delicious. Or, or, <laughs> would you like the most delicious... Uh, yeah, I, I, f- I forget. I mean, I can see why people find that movie compelling, for sure. Um, Personally, like... I liked it, but yeah, I felt like the the pacing and the story just didn't really hit home for like me personally. But um, yeah, no, but, same. Yeah, but that that's definitely like the most talked about and, and polarizing witch film so far. But it is another film that paints the the witch as like this Evil. outside influencer, just like pulling you know yeah. people in, kinda and fucking setting them up and yeah, which so, is not. <laughs> how that works by the way yeah um it's probably not like my favorite kind of interpretation of the witches i actually do like the uh you know the portrayal of them as like like in sabrina and the craft and stuff like yeah. that just like real people exactly you who know practice magic like because that's all right they are and some of them can be malevolent you know some of them might not be some of them might be good people uh but you know they're not really like the monsters per se um i think there's few films that really do that right i think blair which is definitely one of them i think uh, also the autopsy of jane doe is another one that does it really well especially because that movie is just like super creative and uh you don't even really find out that she's a witch until like most of the the way through yeah you know so that that's one not, not that's one of my favorite horror movies to be released pretty recently but that's one of my favorite witch movies too one of the best i think and it's not recent the witches of eastwick with jack nicholson yeah i really like that one and i'm glad you put that in the outline because basically the premise is like satan comes to town mm-hmm. he starts you know fucking with these witches and then they're like, yo, we got to stop him. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. want to ruin it because like, it's not that popular of a movie, but it's Jack Nicholson and it's witches. Yeah. So I feel like a bunch of people have probably seen seen it, but yeah, I, I understand. That that was a great film though. Yeah, the, the witches were just portrayed as like, you know, sisters and looking for love, you know, basically like lots of witch films have kind of had a similar premise. Um, but yeah witches overall i think have been uh also connected with the devil a lot oh yeah so uh which you know is kind of like a historical thing and wiccans don't even believe in the devil so right they, earth air fire water <laughs> what's the other cycle captain planet <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh but there have definitely been lots of films that have that element daughters of satan rosemary's baby is the oh, same. oh yeah rosemary's baby i forgot the yeah. whole 
cult getting lady pregnant with devils yeah Yeah, i forgot about it kind of too um but there are lots of films that don't make any of that like satanic connection so i don't know if it's even like really necessary i don't know if i like it i I don't think it's necessary because most witches aren't like satan satanists or luciferian or any of that i think it's just a way to like shoehorn in a a darker kind of element to your horror movie you know like oh she's a witch she you know sacrifices little babies to satan yeah (laughs) you know like why can't you just make something that's just more enticing like with an original concept like the autopsy of jane doe yeah that that like make or (laughs) suspiria even i was gonna say like don't make witches like fucking connect back to satan because like like i said a lot of them don't even believe in Mm -hmm. him Make some non-Abrahamic religion witches. You know what I'm yeah. saying? All these witches are like, huh, we follow the Dark Lord. It's like, I don't know yeah. you, bro. <laughs> what are yeah. you talking about? <laughs> having having said that, though, I, I do love the the reboot of Sabrina, the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, yes, even though it includes that. It's kind of teeny. Yeah. But it is good. I'm not going to lie. I, like I said, Harry Potter vibes from it. Yeah. But I, I can th- we can we count Harry Potter? Those are witches. Well, yeah. witches and warlocks. Yeah, I mean they're not quite as much horror movies, obviously. It's which okay. is why I didn't include once, them. But w- once Voldemort shows up, it, Harry yeah. Potter becomes a horror movie. Yeah. Plus but, you get all those like fucking. Don't say his name. Yeah, we we kind of do have to mention it though because oh yeah, you know aside from like Blair Witch and a few other movies here and there, obviously you know witches have become way huger of a thing due to harry potter oh yeah that's, fuck that's yeah. just that's just, that's a just given, facts you know? and i think that that's one very big reason why we're seeing more witch horror movies now um you know there's a lot lots of other reasons too i mean it's it's a it's a pretty appealing subgenre in general because you know it involves spells and magic and you can basically do whatever you want with it yeah yeah um which which i think is cool i don't know if we need to keep seeing like you know interpretation after interpretation of like the salem witch trials but uh, you know whatever i don't fucking make these things i guess <laughs> yeah i mean they're fun but a lot of them just aren't original yeah like like we get it like we know what happened yeah bro we read about you it know? in like fifth grade and we were fucking <laughs> mortified <laughs> exactly so i think the the trend now needs to be more creative witch concepts and i think we kind of got that with the movie that we are going to highlight in our next segment the chopping block (laughs) so this interpretation uh of of the witch is in shutter's original new film the witch in the window that movie yep spoiler alert it's good yeah i i enjoyed it honestly it's it's kind of a weird movie it's to a, like it's a horror drama that's the yeah. best way i can and it's fucking the dra- i call it a drama just because of like the the main character struggle and because of like the character development and and mm-hmm. and like he has a struggle maintaining a relationship with his wife and his kid mm-hmm. and he has that inner struggle most recently when he moves into that house with the witch and initially it just seems like you know father-son bonding you know uh they're they're talking amongst you know with each other throughout like half the movie and then like eventually the son's like i had a nightmare you know i seen Mm -hmm. a witch in the hallway like well i seen that lady in the hallway what's her name lydia it's Mm -hmm. like okay and then finally when you see her you're like all right nothing's happening nothing's happening they're right next to her nothing's still happening we could see Mm -hmm. her face okay nothing's gonna happen blah, blah, fuck like that's how it happened like <laughs> yeah so the dude the jump scares when they happened they were done at perfect times yeah it wasn't like there's a guy walking through a hallway the the <laughs> one the one big one was kind of predictable to me but yeah there wasn't really a ton of well i don't, I don't want to say that there wasn't suspense but it wasn't like straight up in your face like here's this musical score it's just quiet something's gonna yeah, happen it was more like know? a it was like psychological initially yeah and then especially near the end like yeah. when the witch tricked him his son was like you're my favorite person you know yeah no, you're not. There, there, there were a lot of really good uh parts about this film honestly but the it, it was i don't know from the get-go i was not sure what i was watching um so that's what that's what i want to warn you guys about you know like i think from the start this isn't really gonna like feel 
like it's going to be a horror movie. The score is like super interesting and it's not really atmospheric at all. It's like kind of, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like kind of like boppy. Like, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard for me. You just have to listen to it for yourself. And then like the way that it's shot feels more like an actual drama. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause it's, it's produced really well. I mean, the, the shots look crisp. They look Fuck beautiful. Yeah. That's what I liked about it. Like, because Shutter will release, you know, some miscellaneous horror movies here and there, and they're kind of mm-hmm. some of them are pretty good, some of them are okay, and a lot of them are bad. Yeah. But this one was not one of the bad ones, and I'm happy it wasn't. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, it was sort of anticlimactic, but yeah. it wasn't about like you know in your face action horror like yeah. fucking like Conjuring with the whole oh uh, here's the Exorcism oh she's crawling through the floor you know yeah, like, not at all I mean I think the actual like horror parts were kind of few and far between you know it was definitely a horror movie in the sense that you know it's about this kind of folk tale about this witch who died in this house and, and uh, it's got a cool concept too because like as as they are fixing this house this father and son portrayed by uh, uh, Alex Draper and Charlie Tacker I like Alex Draper bro yeah, he was he was good. I hope I see him in more movies. Yeah, he's, like, he's a father. Yeah. He's a really good fucking actor, bro. Like that movie, like like a lot mm-hmm. of horror movies have like you know, like super over exaggerated acting. You know, or like, yeah. like Hereditary had some of like the worst acting from the sun. Yeah, but this this dude's fucking great, and I I want to see him in like like a like a Blumhouse movie. You know, like in mm-hmm. like maybe the next Conjuring film or something. Because that'd be cool. He he was dope. Like. That's yeah. my favorite word. I'm bringing it back again. <laughs> Haven't used that on the podcast in a while. Cause, uh, Dope. Yeah, because uh, my buddy Woodsy, Brian, he commented on our Halloween review about mm-hmm. how he hated like the whole doctor thing. He was saying like he's like you say dope a lot. I was no. like I was like yeah I kind of do. He's like he, I was like I need to stop. He's like no it's fine. It's just that you you say it a lot. And I was yeah. like, Well, <laughs> when I like something, you know. Yeah, we we all kind of have those like you know ticks with like words and stuff like that so yeah. big shout out to my friend brian hey woodsy mm-hmm. hey Ho- what's up man hopefully we get to play dead by daylight this weekend nice and then thank you for the review as well and thanks for listening thank you all for listening oh yeah we appreciate everyone our mm-hmm. our halloween review got 370 something likes on instagram yeah. and then our our trick-or-treat review got like almost 200 and we're getting there yeah yeah we appreciate each and every one of you that are listening we hope that you like our recommendations i want to go back to the witch in the window just for like uh, you know a couple minutes mm-hmm. but overall yeah i thought the film was really great it really kind of like grew into itself yeah because it went from that like kind of weird you know vibe that it gave off at the beginning of the film and once the the neighbor guy got introduced and he started telling like the story of of lydia the witch and everything it like took a completely different turn yeah. you know you could see that it was getting like darker yeah darker and darker and then that's when it turned like super psychological it was right after yeah. he went to the dude's house and they sat on the porch and had that talk mm-hmm. yeah it was super eerie too like yeah that's that's, the thing that, I that's when it started like i don't know like i felt uneasy during like the whole mm-hmm. mo- maybe just because of the way it shot it was just like in the middle of basically nowhere yeah and when you have like when you have great cinematography that shows you the whole area, but there's nothing really out there, mm-hmm. it gives you that sense of fuck. There's not much out there, but there's like something bad out there. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that—that's the felt. That's the feeling I got from this movie. Like, I turned off my lights, smoked a little J, and I turned this on, and I was fucking scared, bro. <laughs> yeah, the thing I liked a lot were like the the shots inside the house. You could tell that there were like lots of shots through like doorways and stuff. You know, the, you could interpret it in like a lot of different ways, but those were awesome, and they they made me feel kind of like claustrophobic too. Cause, yeah, because one of the biggest elements was like the house itself. Well, so during like the the scenes where like like near the ending, after like the the father met up with his neighbor, you know, and like mm-hmm. they talked when he went back to his house, like it felt like the air in my room was thicker. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that's how I felt. Like it was just that that extreme unease. Mm-hmm. Like as as soon as like. You know, his neighbor was like, I knew all along and I wanted to tell you. I don't know if he was a redneck, but that's how I'm portraying yeah. <laughs> him. But I don't know, dude. Like, I felt like this was done really well. And uh, is, is it only on Shutter? Yeah, I think so. Damn, people need to get Shutter. Yeah. Shutter has some fucking fire. They do have a lot of great movies. Only like five bucks a month. So you could go check out uh, 
the witch in the window i definitely recommend it it's not chopped for me it sounds like it's not for oh, you oh fuck no dude this yeah. is this is what okay so here's my so far in uh 2018 my my top horror movies number one for me was summer of 84 number two was hereditary the third was halloween was Bloodfest the one we watched here? Yeah. Bloodfest, that was one. And then the fifth one, I don't know. I had something initially before, but now it's like Witch in the Window. Yeah, it is good. Just be prepared. Like, this is kind of a slow burner, and there are going to be lots of times where it feels like nothing's happening. But the good thing is, like, there's always stuff happening, even if it isn't horror-related. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't expect to be scared the whole fucking movie. Like, you have to be interested first. There has to be, like, some sort of substance to the story. And there is. This guy's facing this internal struggle. Because he doesn't know if his son likes him and, you know, his him and his wife are divorced. So he goes, he buys this house in the middle of the country, just like his wife mm-hmm. always wanted. He's trying to reunite his family. Yeah. And it kind of goes south. <laughs> I like the, uh, spoiler alert, at the end, the, the papa dies. <laughs> I guess it was his heart condition, which is, whenever they say something won't happen in a horror movie, it usually happens. Mm-hmm. Remember he told his son, he's like, you know, I got this heart problem. He's like, I think he had like mitral valve prolapse, which is like a common thing. And he's like, Oh, are you going to be okay? And he's like, oh, I got a better chance of getting hit by a meteor in my bed, you know? And yeah, huh, looks like you don't, buddy. <laughs> I guess not. Yeah. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And the twist was pretty cool. It was, uh, it was just, yeah, it was really eerie. What do you think was in about that, uh, that, that picture that was like in the kids room that he like kept looking at and the camera like focused on it you remember what I'm talking yeah, about? yeah i remember but what? i have no idea i wanted yeah. i initially was like yo why the fuck do they keep showing that and then i went i tried to look for like a synopsis but the movie's not that big so like they didn't yeah. they didn't have a wiki on it when i looked at it and like they didn't usually like the wiki synopsis will give you scene by like mm-hmm. scene like what happens like and i don't know i never really i, I never peeped the significance of that and i think i need yeah. to go back and watch it and Maybe see if it related to anything else in the film. You probably got to look at it from like either really close or like really far away. I don't know. It was interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of depth to this film and there's some things that are left unanswered, but it doesn't really leave you feeling like unsatisfied. It's just like a good mystery kind of to think about, you know, and there are lots of things like that in this film, I feel like. So, yeah, final thing I'll say um i definitely recommend that you guys go check it out if you want like an eerie horror movie the portrayal of the witch in this film uh was like i said before kind of similar to the blair witch in that it's like this like folk tale kind of urban legend but there are some cool twists on it um and i think it's a pretty creepy film so go check it out yes nine out of ten for me nice yeah i'll give it like a solid eight eight and a half out of ten yeah yeah so Go check out The Witch in the Window uh, if you haven't seen The Blair Witch Project or any of the other films that we mentioned. Uh, do yourself a favor and go look them up. I hope everyone's seen The Blair Witch Project. I hope so. Yeah. I don't know if you can call yourself a horror fan. Even if you hate it. It's been it, almost 20 yeah. years. and Yeah. That's crazy that it's that When old. you think about it, 1999, I think back, I, I think 10 years ago. Like, yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Yeah. We were like six years old. That's crazy. But yeah. Anywho. Uh that was our discussion on witches let us know what you guys think uh maybe what some of your favorite witch movies are but i think that's going to wrap it up with episode 36 and uh, make sure you stock our social media on instagram we're grave discussions on twitter we're grave disc srd and on facebook we're grave discussions if you google us you'll find our website grave discussions.net that's right we're googleable we're the first results when you type in grave discussions yes. all of our reviews will be like episode three four they won't give any order but the first thing they'll take you to is our website and also make sure you check out sports radio detroit's twitter facebook and instagram ladies gentlemen boys and ghouls we will see you next week on grave discussions This has been an SRD production.